when it all came out that VAR was going to be with us and we were going to have to live with it because it's not going away anytime soon. Danny, you still railed against it. You, you've never been that comfortable with the way technology has arrived in uh, the top level of the game and that whether we like it or not, we're going to get on with it. Um, you have it more now. Well, I think you have to be open-minded enough to show you have to get to a point where you accept something that even if you don't want to, if it's if it, you can see that it's staying and you can see that there's no chance it's going to go. You have but to. it's improving, isn't it? Well, it's it's a bit like Liverpool's form this season, Var. It has good weekends and awful weekends. Well, I mean, before... but I don't. I wouldn't suggest. I would. Well, in fact, I would be categoric in saying this season's been worse than last. So that's not progression. No. Well, we've just get the stats in from the independent key match incidents panel. Right. who sound like a very important bunch of people. And compared to before the World Cup in Qatar, there there were six incorrect VAR interventions. Oh, you've really lost me, but go on. Six. We're only talking incorrect. about key, we're only talking about key match interventions here, aren't we? Key match interventions. Yeah, that's one one aspect of VAR, isn't it? It's one part of it. Just four, just four since it. Uh, VAR errors for on-field offences are down from 18 to 12 <laughs> since we all got back from Qatar but that's an improvement of 33.3% Mr Murphy are you having that now I, I, I don't do because if it improves again it'll you, look you're even talking better. about key match innovate look all I'll tell you is I've, I work nearly every weekend on football and VAR has not got better this season than last it's worse the other thing is when you when you the on what, when otherwise. you on when what you basis Confi- you, what you what you like is confirmation bias. No, you I, like to I, have an outcome Simon, that's already preordained in your own mind. You can go around. We've had we. It's just we're just regurgitating the same argument. People could press play from two weeks ago, four weeks ago, but six the facts weeks ago. are the facts, Danny. They're facts that are, we're talking about key match interventions here. And we're talking about some other statistics amongst the mix of it as yeah, well. Yeah, but you keep and throwing numbers them, at me. Both of them, and that's fine, Danny, but that's how you measure things. What do you want to measure them? By your eyes but only. They're not, they're not, they're not... You're not watching every single game in every single instance. The numbers on correct. In your view, because they don't confirm your preordained bias. You don't like it, you don't want it, you think it fails. They're subjective numbers based on what is a key match incident about about what is a right well, or wrong you, decision. Well, okay. They're not, they're not D- factual Danny, how numbers. Do you, how do you, the uh, facts are this. Go on then. That the majority of people who love football across the game of fans, players alike, would rather not have okay. it. Why is that? And let's analyse this. Why is that? And let's analyse that statement, right? The majority of people that do yeah. nothing but bitch and moan about every single decision. There's an industry being made out of criticising referees and criticising refereeing what decisions. Uh, the media industry that sits there with smug little sods like Gary Lineker the evaluating me- every media- single outcome. The media has always been there. Fine, but now what they're doing is they're producing a situation where it's almost it's almost impossible to referee because the scrutiny of the nature of the media. So what we do is we put aids in to do it. And then because we've not finished criticising it, we now criticise the aids that we put into place because we've got this ridiculous expectation that we're going to get it... This isn't bleeding artificial intelligence. We're not going to get it right 100% of the time. The facts bear out the argument that's being put forward to you that statistically, whether we like it or we don't, that VAR is making more decisions that are correct than that are incorrect. Now we should say, well, that's what it's been brought there for. But VAR isn't VAR isn't isn't Big Brother watching from above. It's a human being looking at a digital but, screen. But I know that. It's the I'm not, same thing. I'm not denying aid. that VAR and its outcomes gets more right. most of its decisions right. When you look at it ten times, you should. And, and, and the argument last week from Steve Cooper was absolutely ridiculous. Um, I, the on-field decision was he was talking about a decision that went his way, and he talked about the, I can understand why the referee didn't get it right. But VAR got it wrong as well. So which do you want? Do you want VAR or you don't want VAR? Because you'd accept the referee on the pitch getting it wrong, but you don't accept VAR. There's a preordained bias about VAR from certain mindsets to suit an argument. I don't think it's brilliant. I don't think it's anywhere near where it could be. I think it will keep on evolving. I don't think it's far off. But I think, no, I think the spontaneity of it losing, I think the time it takes to get Did you see Spurs, Brighton? I don't think it's far off, though. Did Danny. you see Spurs? Brighton? It's getting a heck of a lot more right than wrong. You can, you can, you can. Anything that's got lots of angles and cameras looking at it should get more right than wrong. Should it's, right. it's physically impossible not to. But you're dis- but, but so you dis- many you big decisions. In principle. It yeah, I do. I do. I applaud them for not... what they're doing, and they're going in the right direction. I applaud Howard Webb. I applaud Howard Webb for trying to fix it by making changes 
trying to bring in better personnel, trying to make the, the their decisions more consistent by communicating better with everybody. But that's common sense. All he's doing is disarming the argument, right? He's not doing anything to change the technical approach of the referees at this moment. Because well, we've he... still got a bunch of lily lived referees that won't take control of the situation at times and prepare to abdicate responsibility. What he's doing is he's disarming people like us by saying, we'll get out in front of it and we'll say, we're sorry, we made a mistake. We'll be a bit more communicative. Well, that's think great. Do, I think he's doing a bit more than that. Well, I don't I hope, see it anyway. just yet. I hope. I think he will do inevitably will do but the problem with this argument with people like yourself is again I talk about confirmation bias you want someone to echo what you have what you what you believe to be the case and unfortunately the statistics don't bear it out whether you like it or you don't the outcomes are better as a result of VAR now should they be better could it be better will it get better all of the answers are probably yes but it won't get better and it won't get better if people constantly keep on evaluating the things that it doesn't do rather than the things that it does do exactly it's like, whether it's I'm whether not having it it's whether you think numbers just because numbers suit your, your argument and maybe say they get well, this right. Let, 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 me, let me finish. Statistics bureau argument. But do statistics make a better experience? Danny, oh, I don't want a goal to stand Can you answer the question? I don't want a goal to stand That's a different discussion. Stand. Do the numbers that suit VAR, that make it better in speech marks, do they make the experience of watching but football a, but that's better? A different but argument. That's a different argument. Well, it's not. It is a different argument. It's part of the same no, argument. They cross argument. over, Simon. Your biggest argument has always been they don't make. My biggest argument is they've not enhanced the game. They've not enhanced they the football enhanced experience. The by separate, hang they on, haven't. Hang on, let's, let's just quickly pair back on that. The object of the aim was to get more of things right than wrong. So it's enhanced it on that basis. What it's lost on the other side of it is something that you can't square in your mind, which is spontaneity. Now, if they fix that particular situation, they get answers quicker and more effectively and get outcomes in a, in a yeah. far, far more spontaneous... And then everybody will be then happy. Then everybody will win. Yeah. And, yeah. Your argument, and then, you'll just, then you'll just go back to not liking it because you don't like it. The problem you've got... There's much more probability now, Danny, that goals that shouldn't stand aren't standing and goals that should stand are standing. Yes. End of! Which win it's games? not the end of. All we want it is to be quicker it's, in the process. It's the only the end of in your mind and the, and the people who want to justify VAR. The end of... Not everything is about having perfection. Every, every The experience of going to football is not all about having 100% right, but, correct referee do you, decisions. But do you agree with the principle that we have done nothing as an industry but criticise and constantly critique the mistakes that are being made on a football pitch by referees? I think we got to a point where we were very bad at it. Yeah. It was yes. too much. And, and so we got in the deserve, land match we? of the day and all your life. we're still doing it. Oh, I'm not having but that. Still I'm not do having... Be we're still doing it. The stats prove it. Yeah, I know. It's I, working. I, I, we're still doing it. Jim White and Simon Jordan. Monday to Friday mornings from 10 on AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.